Sometimes it's, it's a good idea to get different disciplines, different concepts, cross-curricular activities into your uh, chemistry lesson. Here's a good way to uh, get that sort of thing into a discussion of bonding. We can walk over to the board. There are many different kinds of fabrics. Um, things like silk and wool are essentially proteins, amino acids. They have potentially ionic groups on them. Bonding works really well with those. With something like cotton, which is essentially cellulose, there are lots of hydroxyl groups. These are polar molecules. You can still get good connection with, uh, with various dye materials. Polyethylene, CH2, 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 really not receptive to dyes. And one of the things you can do by using indicators, uh, malachite green, Congo red. Congo red's a really good one because if you dye something with Congo red and you let it dry and you rinse it with vinegar, it changes color. But um, all these things, methyl orange is good um, to work with. I did a lab in this direction uh, working with Ken Williamson years ago and we have an extensive um, procedure for it. There's a very extensive procedure in the PDF that will accompany this tape. And Flynn has the uh, colors of chemistry kit, essentially the same thing. What I've got here, though, when I was developing this, I was in contact with a company called Test Fabrics. And they make a number of... Um, fabric samples, of which this is one. Let me hold one up here. What You see the black line at the top. Starting from there and going down, there are 13 different fabrics. Okay, Various types in various orders, and you can see a little bit of the difference in shading. But one of the things that Test Fabrics does is make some dyes that will identify fabrics. Uh, this is their test dye number one. This is their test dye 3A. Their combinations, their, uh, their recipes that they have. But you can buy this stuff. Not cheap, but you spend the 30 or 40 bucks for a roll of this stuff. You'll never need to buy it again unless you teach for over 60 years. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm in my 43rd, I think. What I've done is preheat these. They're not particularly hot now. If I were actually doing this, I'd want them boiling. But what I would do is take a little strip of this material, put it in one, another strip, put it in the other, put them down in. Let's use the stirring rods. Pretty much any fabric. Oh, and if you're going to use like cotton, cut up an old t-shirt, bleach it and wash it and rinse it and rinse it in hot water uh, to get all the sizing and all that stuff out of it. But whatever dye you're using, it takes about five minutes. You let it boil. Earlier this week, we took um, these two solutions. Let me come around here. Here's the acetate, and you can see that you get a different color from one test dye than with the other. This is the 3A, this one, so they're lined up the same way the beakers are. Acetate, uh, flame retardant, mod acrylic, RNL. Here's cotton that's bleached. Here's silk down here. Something in that dye mixture really goes for the silk, but ionic. Uh, spaces on it, holds dye as well. How does the silk do on, on 1A? Oh, nice, intense, kind of a maroon color. Here's, um, here's wool. Notice, again, the ionic, the polar dye really well. Uh, what do we have in there? Look at the polypropylene. 
There's nothing for the die to hang on to. Okay? If you go through just this, I would do as a demonstration. If you want to have your students do it, get three or four or however many you think you can handle in your lab setup. It varies for all of us. And have the students actually go through and do these. What's going to happen is, you know, five kids are going to put strips in here. How do I know which one's mine? You don't. But wait a while, pull one out. If, if yours has been in five minutes, pull out the one that's the most developed. Let's see what I have here. Okay, see, I'm already starting to get some color change. Is that, can you pick that up? Okay, after it's in there for, as I say, about five minutes, take it out, let it drain, go to a sink, rinse it real well. The big reason to let it drain is so you don't run out of dye bath. But um, rinse it, put it someplace to let it dry. It can dry on paper towels. If you can work up maybe ring stands with iron rings, you can drape the samples over that. One team could drape three or four samples over one iron ring. The point, though, is that you can get as deep into the bonding as you want to. You can have some really attractive products. And of course, the kids take these home. Or you can have them fasten that strip to their lab report. Then when you get the lab report back, they can take the strip home. And they love them. It's a great way to get the kid with a little more artistic attitude, likes to be a little more creative. It's a great way to bring that student back into chemistry. And it's really pretty. OK, we're back in here. The um, samples we put in have pretty much finished cooking. I thought it might be fun to see what comes out. Depending on the setup of your lab, you might want to use a tray like this. If you're close to a sink, great, go to the sink. But what we need to do first is take these out and rinse them. This, you will call, was the number one uh, fabric material. Let's see if I can get that to lie flat. There we go. Okay, and you, you can see that the, uh, <laughs> kind of bending my arm around here, but you can see that the colors are nicely developed, They're nice and bright. And what we're going to do that a little bit straighter, is set them on an iron ring here, let them dry, get the other one. And hold it by the top. Notice that on my finished samples, the, the top has a little black strip. That's how I know which way to put it. This is the 3A. I can maybe hold that like that. OK. So we've seen the before, kind of in the middle, and the finished product. And hopefully that will uh, maybe be just that little more impetus to give it a try.